Greetings everyone. This is an earthquake watch for October 23 through to October 26. Just updating recent earthquake activities. We have received some significant seismic events the last few days, as mentioned in my previous video. I am going to be concentrating ahead now and let's go straight into data. The last 24 hours we have received a sun grazing comet make an appearance and plough into the sun. We should be seeing some CME activity over the next few days and some flaring so that's worth keeping an eye on as we can see the comet right there. Just taking a quick look at the X-ray flux and we could see that there is a, a fairly small event that was um, monitored on the 20th of October and it's been fairly quiet since so this gives us an indication that um, some seismic activities are just around the corner. And here is the information from the Space Weather Prediction Centre. They're advising us that the geophysical activity would be fairly quiet um, leading up to the 24th of October and, uh, and slight picking up. OK, let's get straight into the moving imagery. And we're looking at the SDO and this is um, showing the coronal hole which is around about the New Zealand region, south 45 degrees. And we haven't seen any effects yet and I think that we're not too far away from receiving uh, some form of uh, seismic activity in this region. Um, we can see the coronal hole um, is moving slightly which gives us an indication that a fairly large event could be possible. Okay we'll have a look at the solar monitor with an updated grid and we can see clearly the coronal hole here and it seems to be that we're going to be receiving a, a 6.5 quake in this region I would think and if we don't get one in this region and um, which will probably be only the next 24 hours. It looks like we need to concentrate in the other coronal features which have just started to pop up. As we can see from Google Earth, the feature on the Earth seems to match uh, quite accurately the um, coronal hole. And I'm not thinking that although Christchurch has been fairly active um, for the last month or so, it seems that um, we may be receiving an event on the edge of New Zealand. Um, off the South Island and there is a fault line which runs around this region and I would think that more than likely we'll be receiving an event just off the coast and um, hopefully it's nowhere near Christchurch but that's where I see the likely event to be and the moon is probably about five to six hours away from reaching this point so that'll be the watch for today and I'll concentrate now on the um, October 23 onwards. OK, getting back to the solar monitor, we do see a significant um, uh, magnetic filament that's still attached to the sun. Now this data is um, probably about 12 hours old, so the filament has moved. And we'll have a look at the moving data in a moment. It'll show that this, uh, that this magnetic filament has exploded, and we'll have a closer look in a moment. Now, it's important to note that the previous filament that was in the southern hemisphere um, did correlate with a chilly earthquake. So we could be seeing a, a significant event in this region, um, probably October 23 or 24. Okay, we'll just have a look at it now. We can see the filament right in the centre of the screen and it just let loose and the subsequent eruption on the sun. And it looks fairly significant. We did get something like this um, early, um, probably October 8 or October 6. And we saw a similar effect. And there you can see this is a significant movement and fairly powerful. Now we've got two satellites that apparently are giving us these images and this magnetic filament must have just missed the satellite in between a satellite and Earth so this could have given some damage had it have been Earth directed and there were no X-ray spikes um, indicating that this was Earth bound but this is a very very powerful event. Now this is a filament that erupted. There is also another filament that's very very active and it seems to be throwing out a lot of debris and um, a lot of electromagnetic activity so we may be receiving some very large spikes occurring once this is facing Earth so it'll probably be um, October 24, 25 where we may be seeing a lot more activities on the magnetic field. So this is the area that we're concentrating on right now and we've got some very large coronal holes that we need to plot and map also and this is very very interesting to watch. OK, now we're going to plot this and we're just marking this feature 20 degrees to 28 degrees north 
and this other region above looks to be um, perhaps a separate region that may be involved, which is about 29 to 30 degrees north. And the most obvious area is the Gulf of California again. We did receive a 6.7 yesterday, and it seems that the coronal holes and the magnetic filament that released on the sun seems to have a similar appearance to this. As we can see from the USGS uh, map of the fault line, we can see that this fault line actually begins, and this is a San Andreas and how it bends away from the Mexican fault line below. Now the actual hole is 20 to 28 degrees on the sun, and that doesn't seem to match this because we have a, a gap in between these two fault lines. And it, as you can see, the 24 degrees where these events have been occurring and probably goes to about 22. So I'm thinking that the coronal hole on the sun doesn't quite match this and it is very dangerous. We don't want to be seeing another event uh, anywhere along this fault line could, act, could activate the entire fault line. So that is the best mapped matching and uh, we'll have a look, quick look at the solar monitor again. And we can see the similarities and the only difference is that this bottom part doesn't seem to match. And the only other region that would match this would be the uh, Ryuki Islands, which is on the opposite side, and also the Volcano Islands region. Now, I have been uh, mentioning these areas in the last few videos, mainly because the similarities within the solar features um, tend to show. And as we can see, the Benin Islands, and just the thickness of this trench seems to fit a little bit better than the um, coronal hole and what we're looking at. And I'm thinking that we could be receiving an event in this region, a fairly sizable event, possibly up to 6.8 to 7 in magnitude. Either the Volcano Islands or up slightly higher up towards the Bonin Islands, even the Izu Islands. So this is just underneath the Japan region and it would be in play. The only concern I have that if we do get a, another quake in the middle region here, that could really be dangerous as we've had a 7.1 in Baja California early in the year and the recent events underneath here in the Gulf of California. Perhaps a larger event in the middle here may trigger off a, um, a very dangerous event. So we hope that it's not in that region. Okay, going to be flicking through some stills now, the 171 and the 193 angstroms. And we can see some fairly significant coronal holes here. And we don't get a replica in both images. We see a very, very sporadic and some very, very significant um, reaches also around the equator that we need to look at as well. As we can see from the image, we can get a, a feel and a, and a sort of an imprint here of the Philippine region and also Papua New Guinea. Um, it seems fairly similar. And we can get a good grip on this coronal hole here as it's fairly well centered and we have, we'll be able to map these two areas now. Now that hole is absolutely perfect for the Salabas Sea and there is the, the feature here just in the Indonesian region just above the equator, uh, just adjacent to the uh, Malacca Sea. Now this area has been fairly active of recent months and we could be receiving an event around the edges here. It seems to me it's going to be just above the equator region and I don't think it'll be this high although the coronal hole does indicate um, it would be around the edges of this plate line so that'll be a significant watch for the next two days. <clears throat> there is another similar feature on earth which seems to match this profile a little better but it hasn't been active at all for a long time, um, 1967 in fact and that's the Red Sea region and extending upwards towards Egypt and I know this area is inactive, but the actual coronal feature ends at 28 degrees and starts at 20. So it's almost identical to what we're looking at on the sun. And there is a massive amount of uh, volcanic possibilities underneath here, which could be um, the start of something perhaps. But it just seems that this fault line may be uh, beginning to um, be active. Then the other region, um, I did talk about in the previous video was Taiwan and the Ryuki Islands. Now the Ryuki Islands is interesting, it's an opposite uh, mirror image of what we're looking at on the Sun and I tend to look for these things also so perhaps there is a, another likelihood that um, this area may be activated also. 
So there are some regions and I am expecting a few significant events, possibly 6.8 in magnitude and 6 in magnitude. And there's also another area in the southern hemisphere we need to look at. There is a possibility that the region in the Kermatic Islands may be affected again also. I see another coronal hole which is south 26 degrees extending down. And that'll be underneath the Vanuatu and this trench here of Lordsy Islands. Um, probably the best match would be uh, probably in the middle here, south of Kermatic Islands or the actual Kermatic Islands itself which is just underneath the uh, um, Tonga regions. So that'll be it for my earthquake watch. Um, this is the event we did receive um, a few days ago. So there could be a larger event in this region, probably a 5.5 to a 6 in magnitude. So the main area of concern that we need to keep our eye on is the um, New Zealand area. Um, just for today and then the earthquake watch would be mainly for the regions that I've targeted on October 23 to 26 and that would be the Gulf of California, the Volcano Islands and the Benin Islands in Japan and possibility of some other areas that I've targeted in the, in the video. Thanks for watching.